while they make their way to their, uh, their seats. Take your Bible tonight, turn to Matthew chapter 28. That's where we're going to launch the message tonight. We have been looking at the rapture, and we're doing part six tonight of the series of messages on the future of Jesus Christ. We left off this morning talking about why is the rapture so important to the Christian? How does it challenge the Christian? So we're going to continue that tonight. Uh, the next point, point number four, it challenges us to pass on the gospel and preach the word of God. Look at Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let's pray and we'll, we'll get into this. Father, thank you again for the evening. Lord, I pray that you'll touch my lips with your, your hand, Father. Father, I pray that you'll give power to the message. Holy Spirit, work in our hearts. Lord, convict us of sin if there are sin problems. Lord, encourage us if we're down in the dumps. Lord, help us to have a burden for the souls of people who do not know you. Now bless this message. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. You know, one day while visiting a home of mentally handicapped children operated by a, a Christian friend, Josh, Joseph Stowell, who was president of Moody Bible Institute, noticed the tiny hand prints of children covering the window. They were just everywhere. And Stowell remarked about them to his friend, all these hand prints on the glass. And his friend responded and he said, he said, oh, those prints, the children here, they love Jesus and they are so eager for him to return that they lean against the window as they look up to the sky. Amen. Do you have that kind of attitude about the Lord's coming? Do you groan? For the throne. You know, the George Gallup poll records that 62% of Americans believe in the Lord's return. The greatest outpouring of missionary and evangelistic efforts since the 1800s have come from denominations that strongly believe in the rapture of the church. The imminent return of Christ creates a sense of urgency. Urgency is missing today among those who are lost without Christ as well as some Christians. Those who are unsaved don't sense the urgency in being saved now because they believe they have plenty of time to make a decision later. <coughs> Felix illustrated that attitude in Acts 24, 25 that says, and as Paul's talking, and as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient, there it is, a convenient season I will call for thee. That attitude has been multiplied millions of times. People want to wait for a convenient season. Many Christians today, unfortunately, they lack urgency when it comes to sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with family and with friends. They too feel they can talk to people at a later time. God, however, states that the matter of salvation is an urgent, an urgent matter. Hebrews 3, 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear His voice. Today, today. Jeremiah 8, 20, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. 
at some future period, the time may not be acceptable. Isaiah stressed this truth. Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. If you're going to do business with God, now's the time to do it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Paul said, Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. That my first sermon was on that verse right there. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. James said in James 5, 8, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Uh, Jude 1, 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Beloved, when something is urgent, it demands, it demands immediate attention. If your child is drowning in the pool, that is an urgent matter. If your house is on fire, uh, it is an urgent matter that you get out now. Urgency has power, punch, and weight to push us around when we don't want to be pushed. Urgency has a way of yanking us out of our comfortable little shells. Urgency shouts and screams when we would rather listen to quiet whispers. Urgency can transform someone who is wimpy into someone who is very tenacious and stubborn. Urgency has, has a rippling or domino effect. The pressure on one person tends to spread to others. The, the tyranny, the trauma and totalitarianism of the urgent changes our priorities and bullies us to do what we are not used to doing. In a way, that is good. And sometimes, that can be bad. When urgency motivates us to do what is right, it is a blessing. When urgency causes us to be foolish and make unwise decisions, then urgency becomes destructive. Beloved, when the Christian loses the urgency of spiritual matters and issues, he begins to drift away from the Lord. We are to have a sense of urgency about the salvation of our soul, submitting to the scriptures, saving the souls of unsaved men, and the coming of Christ at the rapture. We're to have urgency about all those issues. Urgency fans, fans the flame of a burning heart for God. Do you have a burning heart for God tonight? That's where you need to examine yourself and see where you're at. I hope your heart's on fire. Uh, i tell you what, I thank God for what He did for me when I was 15. And boy, ever since that night, my heart's been on fire. Uh, there's been times that flame has flickered and started going down, but I corrected that right away. I don't want to lose my fire. I don't want to lose it at all. I want to stay as close as I can to the Lord Jesus Christ and walk with Him and have a burden for people's uh, souls and, and encourage Christians, especially uh, those right now that are, are, have just been beaten to death by floodwaters in the eastern coast. I want to be a blessing to those people. God, help us to be a blessing. You know, people need to be saved because Jesus may come today.
Death could come today for the lost person. Your life may end today. Or the opportunity for others to be saved could vanish because of health problems such as brain damage, dementia, or coma. Don't waste your opportunities. Sometimes you can be tardy and get away with it. But sometimes you can't when you miss out on your opportunities. You know, according to the Associated Press, Near midnight on the evening of June 30th, 1997, United Airlines Flight 728 from Chicago was bound to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And as happens, it was behind schedule. When you're coming out of O'Hare, that's a common problem, okay? But unfortunately, the Harrisburg Airport had informed the airlines that the lone airport runway would be closed from 11.30 p.m. to 6.30 in the morning for construction. Well, that pilot of Flight 728, he believed that he could land before the runway closed. But when he radioed the control tower, he was referring refused permission to land. Well, it's a big country. You would think he could land in Baltimore or Pittsburgh, but no, the plane was ordered to fly all the way back to Chicago, Illinois, so as not to disrupt their flight schedule. The airline put the 101 passengers up in hotels. Well, that was really nice of them. Put them up in hotels and gave them $25 travel certificates. And the next morning, the 101 unhappy travelers made the trip to Harrisburg one more time. A window of opportunity is just like that story. The pilot missed his opportunity to land that evening, but was able the next day. Sometimes, however, we don't get a second chance. Never assume everything will be okay if you miss an opportunity. Sometimes it doesn't work out good. Like missing your flight at an airport. Missed opportunities tend to make life more difficult and stressful. When it comes to serving the Lord Jesus Christ, don't throw away opportunities to tell others about Christ who need Him. Uh, When it comes to the matter of salvation, don't delay it any longer if you don't know the Lord is your Savior. Trust Christ today before it's too late. Now, there's a fifth challenge that comes from the rapture of the church. It challenges us to participate in church and be faithful. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Evidently, it was a problem in that day. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Jesus' return challenges the believer with a burning heart to be faithful to the Lord and His work. Uh, The dedicated Christian does not want to sit around and do nothing or watch others do the work in the church. The person committed to the Lord wants to do something. Uh, There may be some things he can't do physically, but there are other things that you can do. And, and serving Jesus Christ. He wants to get involved and be doing something for the Lord. His or her desire is to be faithful in serving the Lord in some way. Listen, every one of you in here tonight, you can do something for the Lord. There are some things you can do. Well, what can I do? Well, if you can get on your knees, you can pray. And I tell you what, that's a big thing. I remember when my grandmother was 82 years old. She couldn't run a mile. She couldn't lift 
weights or anything like that. But she knew how to get a hold of God. And she was, she was a prayer warrior at Calvary Baptist Church. And uh, boy, I thank God for her. Both my grandma and my grandpa uh, knew how to get a hold of God. And uh, I remember when I was in Canada, I was lost when I went to Canada in, in 1971. And my mother and my grandmother were praying every night that God would get a hold of my life, save me. My grandma was saying, praying that God would save me and call me to preach. She wanted a grandson who was in the ministry. She didn't have one. And so she begged God. And you know what? God answered her prayer. And boy, thank God, this old boy is still preaching. Still preaching since 1972. And I hope I'll just keep doing it. Keep going. Not give up. Not get discouraged. Just pray until, or pray and preach until I just can't do it anymore. Praise God for answered prayer. You can, you know, you know what? You can have a great church when people are faithful in fulfilling their responsibilities in the church and, and also giving to the Lord, the Lord's work. When people, when people are late, un, undependable, apathetic, or uninvolved in the ministry, it hinders the effectiveness of the church in reaching people for Christ, and it puts stress on the workers in the church that have to pick up the slack and carry the load. Uh, now, I know some of you sometimes have come late, you know, and that happens, you know. Uh, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong. But, man, I've known people who've come to this church and they are late every time. They'll come in 10, 15 minutes late and stuff, and I know they could be here on time. Beloved, try to be on time. That's a big deal with me. Man, with my kids, I told them, you be on time. Don't you be late. You be on time at your job you got an appointment, be on time. Man, I hammered that into the kids. And you know what? They're on time. They've learned to be on time. It's an important, important character trait. Now, something else about the rapture. Did you know that the rapture challenges us to be patient? James 5, 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. James 5, 8. Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the low coming of the Lord draweth nigh. James challenges us to establish our hearts. Now what's that all about? That word establish is from the word sterizo, which means to make stable, place firmly, to set fast. Fix, to strengthen, make firm, to render constant or confirm one's mind. The word has the idea of resoluteness, of firm courage, or an attitude of commitment to stay the course, no matter how severe the, the trials may be in your life. In fact, Sterizo comes from a Greek root word which means to cause to stand or to prop up. Now, you know, James was exhorting those about to crumble under the load of persecution to prop up themselves with the hope of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I'll tell you what, if you get discouraged this week, just think, well, you know what, maybe the Lord will come today. You know, things are bad right now, but I know it's not going to always be this way. I know the Lord's coming for me. Boy, I'll tell you what, that doctrine in the Bible is a great source of encouragement. We are not to run away from our problems. The return of the Lord should cause us to stand unmoved by our problems or troubles that we have in our life. You know, many Christians have said to me time to time, I wish... The Lord would come today. I've said it myself. Uh, this is especially true when, when they are going through great trials in their life. There's nothing wrong in wanting the Lord to return right now. We should have that attitude. In fact, the Bible says, even so, come Lord Jesus. The Apostle John said... He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22, verse 20. 
While we watch for the Lord, we are to patiently serve Him day by day. Whatever happened yesterday, that's gone. Today is a new day. And it's still not over yet, okay? You can serve the Lord. It is when we get impatient, then we get frustrated. We get flustered, discouraged, and depressed. And that is not what God wants for you and me. Learn to be patient and understand your difficulties are usually your teachers. Your trials have a way of teaching you important things. James said in James 1.3, he said, knowing this, okay, what is it? That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that, that you may be perfect and entire Wanting nothing. There's a reason why God allows trials in our life. Learn to wait on God as you watch and wait for Him to come back. Waiting requires patient diligence. Some of the greatest missionaries in history de devotedly spread the seed of God's Word. And they, they yet yet they had to wait long periods before seeing the fruit of their efforts. For example, William Carey. He labored seven years before the first Hindu convert was brought to Jesus Christ in Burma. Adoniram Judson toiled seven years before his faithful preaching was rewarded. In Western Africa, it was 14 years before one convert was received into the Christian church. In New Zealand, it took nine years. And in Tahiti, it was 16 years before the harvest of souls began. But guess what? People are being saved in those places. God's working in a great way. But at the beginning, there was a lot of trials. Psalm 37, 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now there's one more challenge that we get from the rapture of the church. It challenges a pastor to pastor his church faithfully. 1 Peter 5.2 says, Feed the flock of God. It doesn't say entertain the flock of God. It says feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Beloved, the responsibility of a pastor is to spiritually feed his people with the word of God. And that's why you hear it every service in this church. This is what matters, the scriptures. He is to use the scriptures to do his best to teach them how to grow spiritually and to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, many, many, uh, many pastors have gotten sidetracked from that important pur purpose. And, it's, and the church is suffering today because so many people are ignorant of what God's Word has to say because it's not being preached to them. From time to time, pastors may face trials. And he is to find comfort uh, that his labor will be worth it all when Jesus Christ returns. Looking forward to Christ's coming and looking forward to Christ's reward motivates any Christian to stay close to, 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 stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ and to have a burning heart for God. Paul spoke about this, and Jesus emphasized this issue at the close of the New Testament. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 says, 
Paul said this. He's getting ready to die. They're getting ready to chop his head off. And he says this before he dies, right before he dies. He says, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge. Now that's interesting that's in there. Why? Because he was thrown in prison by a corrupt judge. The Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but here's, here's you guys too, but unto all them also that love his appearing. There's a crown for those who love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you're watching and waiting for him, and while you're doing that, live your life for Jesus Christ. Until he comes... Or he calls you home to glory through the valley of the shadow of death. Let's pray.